to another great edition of Mississippi Stories. I am your host, Marshall Ramsey, and I'm editor-at-large and editorial cartoonist right here at Mississippi Today. Tell you what, um, the name of this is called Mississippi Stories, and I think I have probably one of the top storytellers here in Mississippi with me here today. He is the brand spanking new, as of August 1st, head of the two museums in Jackson, Mississippi, which is actually Mississippi's two museums. Mm -hmm. Michael Morris is with us. And Michael, congratulations, by the way. I want to just shake your hand on that. You are following in the footsteps of the ever so wonderful Pam Jr., who um, we interviewed not long ago for Mississippi Stories, too. It kind of is an exit exam, just Uh kind of talking about her five years at the helm of the two museums. And And I tell people, you know, the Book Festival obviously is a crown jewel of Mississippi, but I think the two museums is too, because um, I think for two reasons. I think number one, it tells our story very honestly, mm-hmm. and I think also it tells our story from a very personal level, not at a thirty thousand foot right. level. And right. I think that makes it great. But congratulations to you. Um, you. You're from Jackson, Mississippi. I am. You went to Jackson State. I went got to your right history course. degree there, yes. and then your master's in political science. That's it. So, so uh, you're way more educated than I am. Congratulations <laughs> on that one. I don't know about that. But you and I, you and I were talking a little bit before this. Um, you know. You grew up here. I grew up in Atlanta. We grew up both in towns with civil war and civil rights history just on top of each other in the the town, which, of course, obviously, they kind of led to each other. When you were a kid, did you totally, were you fascinated by history or is this something that came on later in life? Uh, Marsha, I really didn't have a choice. So my stepdad, Clyde, was somebody that was very much interested in history. Yeah. Um, he was very involved in the community. He worked at the NAACP. He worked in the VFW. He was a Prince Hall affiliate Mason. And so in my room, <clears throat> in my room, he put up um, these photographs, these composite photos of the Black Caucus. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and so I grew up in my room along with a photograph of Michael Jordan hitting his last shot yeah. with these Black leaders in the legislative caucus. And he'd point to individuals like him and Frazier, yeah. for example, oh, yeah. and say, what do you know about him? And, you know, he could, you know, go to school with all that. So, oh, yeah. So, yeah, I really didn't have a choice but to be fascinated by history. I can remember going to the Megar Evers house yeah. when I was a kid. And, in fact, I grew up going to the Megar Evers library right there on yeah. Howard 49. And so, yeah, just inundated with history. Well, and it's so wonderful, too, if you think about, like, the Evers family. They're still, you know, here in town. You get to see Merle occasionally. She comes in. Oh, yeah. and or you're, you're, you know, you're going to pump gas and there's James Meredith and you're just like, you know, that, and that's really one of the real advantages of being in Mississippi is because it's like history is very real. And yes. It's very like in your face at times too. Yes, absolutely. I, I'm thinking about the Damer family. Yes. Oh, who yeah. Comes to the museums often and they really do make the stories real. Yeah. Um, you know, they're telling it to you from their personal perspective. They were actually there. It's one thing to just look at an artifact. But to actually have a story to be able to pair it with just makes it even more powerful. That the giant picture you've got of, of the, yes. the Damer brothers in their uniforms. I mean, yes. here they were literally serving our country and protecting the very rights that their father had been denied. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. Well, I mean, it's powerful. Yeah, right? very powerful. You just see the ruins of that house. Yeah. And uh, the fact that he died for voting rights. Yeah. Like literally. Yeah. Got his lungs singed, you know, and fighting to protect his family at the same time. You know, just incredibly brave guy. I interviewed both Dennison and Vernon Jr. And the whole time I'm sitting there looking at Vernon Jr. who looks just like his father. I mean, it was was very uncanny the Mm -hmm. whole time. But it's just fascinating. And I want to say I know that you have to be excited about your your job because you've been with the Department of Archives and History now for one year longer than the two museums have been around. Right, I've been there for about seven years at this point. Yeah, seven. Uh, Ooh, you're getting close to vested. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? And so I started out as just a public information officer. That's right. Which means uh, handling media requests, yeah. trying to get information for various reporters across town. But then one day, um, our director came to me and said, hey, we need a director of public relations. Would you be interested in doing that? And I told Katie, I said, I don't know anything about public relations. Yeah, Katie Blunt, by the way, who is a rock star. She's she, a rock star. She does a great like, job. She's very smart, and yeah. she does a great job of leading our organization. Yeah. And she told me she had no idea about public relations herself when she did it back in the 1990s. And so she just really encouraged me to um, take that on, and um, here we are today. Yeah, that's incredible. I mean, you've been involved with some of the strategic planning with the the department also. Absolutely. Every five years, um, we develop a strategic plan 
um, for the department. And basically, we try to go to all the division directors. There are about five divisions in the Department of Archives and History, Administration, Historic Preservation, Archives and Record Services, the DZM division. Um, and we try to go to those division directors and say, hey, um, what is it that you want to accomplish over the next five years? I think that's what makes Archives and History different than other state agencies, is that it really is a grassroots approach to um, what our objectives are going to be over the next five years. And those decisions are made from the staff, um, the kinds of equipment that they need. Mm -hmm. They know better than I was right. working in administration. So. Yeah, so you're saying this, so when you're flying over at 30,000 feet, you can't see exactly what... <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, no, I mean, and I think oh, that's incredibly, incredibly healthy, too, to have that kind of a planning session and so forth. But it's good for you, too, because you, it gives you an idea. And, and we used, I used the metaphor when we were talking before we started filming um, that archives and history, just imagine them as a giant iceberg, right? So a lot of it you can't see. A lot right. of that work's being done every day out in the field, like what's going on at the ruins of Windsor right now, right. you know, what's going on. The museums are kind of the top of the park the public can see, and, right. and, you know, and, and but I never thought in a million years it would get built, hmm. the Civil War. I, mean, yeah. I just, you know, like I said, it was such a strange uh, concoction of forces that came together. When right. you had Haley Barber pushing for, you know, to get the bonds through and everything, it was just wonderful. I mean, I believed it would get done, but it right. was just... When, it, when that December snowy day happened in 2017 right. and it opened up, it was just like, yes. That was a special day. Really I'll was. never forget it um, because I think that next year, same date, I think we were celebrating our one year anniversary, the weather was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> there was no Well, snow. you know what happened. So in 1963, there were two guys walking down Capitol Street saying, we'll have a civil rights museum the day <laughs> Jackson freeze is over. Exactly. And there you go. And that's why we've got five inches yes. of snow that uh -huh. day. Yeah. And, uh, but it was it was a great day, and and the the neat thing about it is, like I said, the two museums are technically two museums. They're combined as one. Right. You've got a, a gift shop, a restaurant, everything all combined. And there's some nice meeting space. Yes. It's all part of the two museums. Right. But you have a distinctive civil rights museum to tell that story, yes. which oh my god, is incredibly powerful. Oh, it's incredibly uh, powerful. Yeah, and we focus in on 1945 to 1975 when we say Mississippi was the ground zero for the civil rights yeah. movement in the nation. Yeah. And um, what we try to tell visitors and what we try to tell folks that ask us about our museums is, you know, what happened here in Mississippi changed the nation. Yeah. Um, when you think about Fannie Lou Hamer's testimony at the Democratic National Convention, yeah. the creation of the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party, these things were not just events that happened in history. They really did change the course of our two party system That's right. in the state. And so, we thought, you know, as a Mississippians, we thought that that story was so important that it needed its own museum. Yeah. And then our Museum of Mississippi History focuses on all 15,000 years of history. Um, I tell folks, in order to understand Mississippi, you got to understand the Native American experience. That's right. And so the only way you can do that is by visiting our Museum of Mississippi History. And um, you really do get an understanding that, you know, these were the first peoples, yeah. right? This is initially was their land. And on into statehood and reconstruction, and civil war, and into modern day period. Um, you know, he's in Mississippi history. Excellent. Oh, I go out on the, the lake right now in the, in the Swan Lake Canoe. Okay, yes. Yeah, absolutely. 500 years old. Isn't that cool? can crack, yeah, out of a 200 year old tree. It's right. just incredible. That's one of my favorite artifacts. It yeah. really is. I can sit there and look at that all day. You really do see the ingenuity yeah. of the Native Americans that made it. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, they probably, there was probably. Um, 15 before that one, right. and they're all at the bottom. Right. <laughs> you know? exactly. And they're like, ah, that's what we did. Right. You know, that. But uh, it really was great. And, you know, when I was a kid, my parents used to drag us around to all different historical sites and everything because they believed that if you saw things, mm -hmm. that you would understand it better. And, and that's one of the gifts of the two museums. And, you know, you think about it, since 2017, I mean, it's probably more than this now, but I know over 500,000 people have been through it. And that includes with that dead time because of COVID. So exactly. that's pretty amazing. It's but, pretty remarkable. Yeah. And um, going back to your point about being able to go out to the places where history happened, we yeah. actually have in the museums explored Mississippi panels. Yeah. And so, for example, the, um, the grocery store that Emmett Till yeah. went to on that faithful day, we encourage people to go to the Bryant's grocery store yeah. in Money, Mississippi. We encourage people to go to Natchez, to the Forks of the Road site, for example, yeah. and see these important places where history happened. So in many ways, you come to the two Mississippi museums, you kind of get a sense of the history of the state, but we're encouraging you to go out 
and, and visit these places. Yeah, and you work with all right. You work with all the other museums too. Yes, I mean, you talk, absolutely. It, yeah, it's it's a it's a network on that, and it kind of it's like a I guess a spoke, mm -hmm. on, you know, or a hub on the spoke for all the spokes. Exactly. Yeah, kind of, kind of like what's your taste? But I think one of the things that I really um, and I know it's been a blessing is because every time I drive by, I see school buses. Mm, yes. Yeah. And that's um, in part due to the $5 million we were able to yeah. raise with the William Winter Endowment. Yeah, that's um, right. And the purpose of that endowment is to just take away any barrier to any student being able to come and visit those museums. Yeah. Because as William Winter said, these are the state's largest classrooms. Yeah. And so these museums were built, you know, primarily for students, but also, you know, tourism is important. Yeah. Uh, an aspect of that too but yes seeing all the kids is really gratifying it is because i mean like you said you get to see their um them learning about history and it's just kind of fun and you get a chance to talk to them and i know you probably like to go wander around through the museum oh, yourself absolutely yeah um i'll tell you a quick story i yeah. was actually in gallery seven which is about black empowerment yeah and uh this young man his name was tyler pidgey Put me to the side. He was pulling out one of the drawers in the exhibits, yeah. and he um, pointed to a woman by the name of Vera May Pigeon from Clarksdale, yeah. Mississippi, mm -hmm. who worked over here in Henry. And he said, "That's my grandmother." What? And so then he proceeded to yeah. tell me, school me, you know, yeah. on what he knew about her and the Clarksdale movement. And I just sat there and listened and um, just took it all in. Um, the museums are a place where you can be teacher and student. Yeah, they really are, and so. I find that uh, gratifying as well. Do you not find that? I mean, seriously, I find that too. Because, like, at the book festival, I was moderating a panel, and one of the people in the audience raised their hand and asked the question and said, Yeah, my grandfather, and I'm going to give you his name, by the way. Please his, do. His grandfather was one of, there was apparently a huge Latvian migration after World War II to mm -hmm. Mississippi. Several thousand Latvians came, and a lot of them settled in the Delta. <laughs> and his grandfather was one of them. And since then, they've, they've kind of, left right? right but they were there originally and there's a cemetery and so forth with that but he was saying that his grandfather picked cotton <laughs> after the war and the guy his friend who picked with them and everything they became really good friends and a few years later when his dad was 80 he took him to the casino and his friend was performing and it was charlie pride oh wow yeah, and so Charlie Pride comes up to his grandfather, recognizes him, even though he's an old man, and starts speaking Latvian to him. Wow. Well, the son speaks Latvian also, and he knew exactly what he said, and he started laughing, and Charlie Pride looked at me and said, oh, you speak Latvian too? He said, yeah. He said, well, Charlie said, well, the first words he taught me were cuss words. <laughs> so, but that's In the, Latvian. But that's the kind of stuff that you hear about right. here. I mean, whether it's the Dutch flyers in Jackson yes. or the German prisoners of war, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, all these stories, the Mississippi River model, but... I mean, that's that's the fun thing. I mean, I've been here 30 years now, and I'm still hearing stories like right. that. And, but like you said, that story you told me about the class of grandfather. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Yeah. Just precious. That um, is. Just special. And then, you know, the descendants of these folks that, that come into the museums. I mean, it really does remind you that, you know, our jobs are uh, to be caretakers of these stories. Yeah. To, exactly. to make sure that the next uh, generation understands them. Um, I think... You know, my goal is to make sure that every student in this state can tell you about Meg Evers. Yeah. Not just the fact that he was assassinated, yeah, but some of the work that he was able to do around the Emmett Till trial, for example, and et cetera. When I got this job, I was in San Diego. And I'm from Atlanta originally, but I live in San Diego. And I went to the library and they had two books. One was a general history of Mississippi, and the other was a biography of Meg Evers. Hmm. And that was kind of what helped me take the, decide to come here and everything. But I found out yesterday that he was the captain of the football team at Alcorn. Yes. I did not know that about him. And that's like a little yeah. fun aspect of his story. Yeah, but I totally understand that, you know, that <laughs> right. him being the leader of the football team. Yeah, right. that's not well, of course he is. Of course he is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's Maker. And, and Charles played, like, was like, well, I don't know why. Yeah, that's my understanding. And that, that totally doesn't surprise me either. And, and, of course, the fact that he met Merlin on campus there. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. really special. And he was a little older because he had just come back from World War Two. Yeah. But uh, they fell in love right there on the campus of Alcorn State University. Yeah, what a love story that's been. Yeah, you know, absolutely. It's incredible on that. So, obviously, new rain, new, you know, a new future. You've done your five-year plan. Where do you think that, where do you plan on going with the two museums? Um, well, I think I want to definitely work with Visit Mississippi and Visit Jackson to make sure that we're doing our best to get the word out about these museums to an international audience. Yeah. I was just in the museums on Sunday. And I met a family from Germany. Um, I met a family from France that wow. came into the museums. Wow. 
Um, you know, Sundays are free, so all kinds of folks are coming in. Yeah. But I was just reminded, man, are we doing all that we can to make sure that, you know, folks know that, first of all, the museums are free on Sundays. That's right. But um, if you're from outside of this country, you really do need to come to these museums in order to gain an appreciation for, for America. Yeah. Uh, and then we want to double down on our school business program, the William Winter Endowment, make sure we, you know, all the school districts understand the qualifications and et cetera. And then lastly, we got uh, a grant from the Lilly Endowment yeah. um, to sponsor our religious initiative. And it's got various components, but um, one of those components is paying for tickets for church groups and religious institutions to be able to come and visit our museums. As you know, religion is a big topic yeah. in oh, Mississippi yeah. history, and oh, yeah. et cetera. And so uh, we're going to be doing that, but we're also going to be offering discounts on event rentals. And so this is a brand new program that mm -hmm. we're just now um, taking off. And I want to make sure we're getting all around the state because these are state museums. Yeah. Um, getting the word out about these programs all across the state. Of course, the legislature has been incredibly generous. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and they're fantastic. And, and the funding and the belief in the mission of, yes. of what the two museums do as well. But also, too, you've had some incredible corporate sponsors. And like oh. you, you mentioned some of them already, some of the foundations and so forth that have right. contributed. Nissan, Toyota, uh, the Kellogg Foundation yeah. has been very generous to us. Uh, we can't help but be thankful because there are not a lot of Fortune 500 companies in Mississippi. Yeah. And so to be able to, I think the legislature asked us to raise about $30 million. And when I say us, I'm talking about the Department of Archives and History yeah. just for exhibits. You know, they gave us $90 million for the buildings. So yeah. In terms of the exhibits, they asked the Department of Archives and History to raise money, which they had never done before. And so um, I've heard Katie say that there was a blessing in disguise. Because now that's something that we do on an ongoing basis is yeah. raise money for these initiatives. Um, yeah, but sometimes when you have to do something, you learn how to do it. You learn how to do it. That's, that's right. right. But yes, we are thankful to the legislature for um, providing funds to us every year and being very encouraging. I think they really do see these as important tourist destinations. Yeah. And so they see the importance of making sure that, that those museums are well-staffed and well-resourced. Yeah, I think it really hit me a few years ago. I was up at the um, B.B. King Museum up in Indianola, wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful museum also. And I'm sitting there looking at the, at the guest book, mm -hmm. and everybody's from Europe. Yep. You know, and then you realize, okay, yeah, Mississippi has a huge draw for people. And the people that fly over here, go to Memphis, for example, yeah. and do the blue shirt. That's right. That's yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, they stop at the B.B. King Museum, and then they find their way to Natchez. Yeah. Um, I think that's just really cool. There are a lot of people that do the Mound Trail, the Mississippi yeah. Mound Trail. Oh, yeah, definitely. Which also um, comes down Highway 61. So, I, I think one of my favorite things is to just wander through the Capitol and see tourists and kind of give them impromptu tours. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's uh, Robin Williams' great-great-great-grandfather. Right, you know? exactly. <laughs> that, that kind Oh, of yeah. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, and, boy, he looks just like him, too. It's <laughs> like, does. wow, it looks like Night of the Museum, just right. hanging on the wall. Exactly. So, on that man, I'm in a way I'm kind of envious of you. You got like one of the coolest jobs in the state. I, I pinch myself every day. I can't yeah. believe that we get paid to do this kind of work. Yeah. And so I'm excited about it every morning uh, to be able to get up and go to those museums and, and well, tell these stories. Yeah, like I said, you, you go to the Civil Rights Museum and it's like so you go through like I said each room and it's like you feel like your heart's sinking and then it just is lifted back up at the end of mm -hmm. it, which is just incredible, very mm -hmm. powerful. And the other museum, you know, when you go through it, you realize what a rich and beautiful gumbo that we are here in Mississippi of all the different little pieces of history. It's, Absolutely. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's well worth your day. It is. Yeah. It is. You brought up Charlie Pride earlier. You know, it's important to acknowledge the fact that Mississippi is the birthplace of America's music. Yeah, every so, component of it. You know, <laughs> exactly. It's like blues, gospel, country, country, Jimmy Rogers, you name it. And so we've got an exhibit in the Museum of Mississippi History, it's a juke joint that yeah. kind of speaks to that, where you can go in there and hear the Clark Sisters or Charlie Pride, I believe yeah. he's got a song in that uh, particular exhibit. But it's important to acknowledge that. And we've got some of the best quilters in the world yeah. um, from right here in Mississippi. And so we've got a bunch of quilts in that particular gallery just to speak to the cultural aspect of the state. Yeah, and you and I both coming off of uh, monitoring panels at the book festival yes. too, you know, after <laughs> our long naps and everything else. Exactly. Like I said, we, you know, when it comes to uh, creative endeavors, the mm -hmm. state's about the best that there oh, is. It's yeah. the best. No doubt. Storytelling, which you do so well. Go ahead and throw out how folks can find you. Um, folks can send me an email at mmorris at mdah.ms.gov. 
Um, they can learn more information about what we do on the Department of Archives and History website at www.mdah.ms.gov or you can go to MississippiMuseums.com. And my phone number is 601-576-6800. See, Michael's not messing around. If you want to get in touch with Michael, you don't know how to do it. It's right Absolutely. here. Michael, I've really enjoyed this conversation. It's been great. I and, appreciate you. Yeah, and I hope to see you down there. Like I said, I need to, I just need to get down there for a day and just kind of wander around. And even if you, I'm glad you brought that up, even if you've been before, I'm encouraging everybody to come and come often. It's um, a living museum. It is. It's a living yeah. museum. There are always things that are changing. And then consider becoming a museum member. Yeah. Um, if you get a family membership, that means anytime you have a, a friend that comes into town, you can just bring them by the museums and you don't have to worry about being charged or anything like that at the front desk. Oh, that'd be great. So, yeah, you can find more information about that on our website. Okay. Very good. Hey, thank you for watching. And, uh, of course, if you want to see other past episodes of Mississippi Stories, you can go to MississippiToday.org. And not only that, you get to see some great journalism and a few good cartoons as well. All right. Uh, from... Michael Morris, I'm Marshall Ramsey. Uh, see you again next week right here on Mississippi Stories. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this episode of Mississippi Stories. Make sure to subscribe to the Mississippi Today YouTube channel and click the bell to be notified every time a new video uploads.